Hello Creative Tartanites, hi and welcome to my surprise um, live session. I usually do um, time lapse Tuesday. Uh, I did come up with the idea of kidding on that this is still a time lapse by kind of going but alas, it's actually much more difficult to go really fast than you would imagine. So um, I think we'll skip that joke for today. <laughs> so hello. Let's see who we have got here today. Oh, we have Mona. Hi, Mona. How are you feeling today? And um, we have Laura as well. Hello, Laura. How are you today? So I, I think I'm ready. Um, oh, hi, Linda. Thank you, Linda. I, I'm so happy to be live. Um, today is uh, going to be all things watercolour. Um, a number of my viewers um, have mentioned that they would quite like to see some watercolour. And um, the, the, the truth is, is that um, I've been wanting to do something with different mediums. Um, rather than just sticking with the um, acrylics. And so today I thought I would talk about watercolour. Now, just full disclosure, I am not a watercolour expert. There are going to be things that I don't necessarily know, or I know maybe a little bit about it, or I know it from theory, not necessarily from practice. Uh, and so I'm going to really just share how I do this. Um, it's not wrong. I, I don't believe in there being anything wrong uh, with any of our techniques. Um, but this is me sharing with you how I do it. So um, I think, first of all, um, we will talk. That's good. I'm so glad uh, that there's a couple of people that are watching that really love watercolours. Um, so let's start off with the materials, if that's okay with you guys. Um, I'm using today, um, this is the Langton and this is Hot Press. Now, uh, Hot Press watercolour paper is just smooth. Um, you do get extra smooth as well, um, which this is. This is extra smooth, this particular one. I also have a smooth one, but this particular one is extra smooth, and this is what I'm using today. Um, the other type of watercolour uh, paper that we have is textured. I could have thought about this as I was setting up. But I was only going to talk about the watercolour paper that I was using. So uh, this is a pad of just cold press. Um, it is £90, so it's not really particularly great watercolour paper. I use tend to use this for practice. Now, you can just about see the texture just in the corner here. So that's what um, cold press looks like. It's much more textured, um, whereas the smooth, you get much more smooth um, gradients and things uh, when you're actually painting on it. Watercolours themselves, again, they come in a absolute variety of um, different makes, types, etc. Um, I'm just having a check on uh, the chat just to see if there's any any questions. Um, so Mona's saying that she likes the cold press paper because she loves the texture. Um, she says that she's weird that way, but that, I don't consider that to be weird. Um, I actually uh, think in the uh, land of creative people, that is actually quite normal. Uh, <laughs> so Linda says that she likes both paper depending on what she's doing. Yes, I'm very the same as well. Um, I quite like using sometimes the textured papers um, uh, and uh, sometimes the, um, the smooth paper. 
I've tended to, to use the smooth paper more when I'm doing portraits, um, just to kind of try and get that smoothness to the skin when I'm doing uh, young faces. However, um, that's not to say that um, I don't like using the textured at the same time for um, young faces too. It just really depends on what I've got to hand these days. Um, I guess I started off with the smooth paper and so I kind of tend to gravitate towards that just because I know it a little bit better. Um, but what I have discovered out of um, all the things, uh, all the papers that I have and that I own is that there is no one right paper. Um, there are some papers that stain easily. Uh, there are some papers that will allow you to do lifting techniques with watercolours more easily than others. So the one thing that I would say to absolute beginners, oh, hi, Chrissy. Hi there. Hello. How are you today? I really enjoyed your live yesterday. That was uh, good fun. So the one thing that I would say to um, beginners is really do not be too hard on yourself with watercolours. Um, do not assume that it's you that's in the wrong when you're using watercolours. It could be the paint, it could be the paper. Okay, yes, it, it, it could be that you've not got great technique with watercolours, but don't make that assumption first and foremost, okay? Um, just play around with it, really see what your paper can do, see what your watercolours can do, um, and um, learn, 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 learn from the things that you don't get right. There is nothing wrong with getting things that don't turn out quite how you wanted them to. Hello, Art Life. Um, oh, well, thank you very much. This is your first live uh, with myself. Thank you very much for joining me, Art Life. Very much appreciated. Um, so that's the paper. Um, I mean, it comes in pads, it comes in single sheets. Um, it comes in pads that um, are glued all the way around all the sides with just a little slit to get something thin under it. Once you've painted, you can then take it off and that saves you from taping it. Um, I will always tape my paper down when I'm using watercolours. Um, I do have a little bit of difficulty with um, the paper warping, which then lifts the uh, the the tape off of the, the backing board. Um, I've yet to find um, a decent enough tape that's going to tape the paper down, but then not come off the backing board, if that makes sense. Brushes. Just like brushes that we use for acrylics and oils, they come in a variety of shapes, sizes, etc. Now, these are all short-handled. Um, paint brushes and this is just a select few I, I do have a couple more but not many um, I've tended to stick to my rounds um, which these are the only one that I've got is a a flat and that's this one here now this was a set of Jackson's um, I bought these from Jackson Art uh, I really like Jackson's Art uh, as a company uh, really very good uh, customer service and I think the products that the um, have of their own line are really good as well so far that I have used. My easel itself is Jackson's uh, and this here um, I also bought from Jackson's. I will show you that in a minute. So the brushes, most of the brushes I have are rounds um, for no other reason other than I'm still learning watercolour so I haven't really expanded uh, in terms of the brushes. I tend to use the same brushes in the first instance, and then as I learn, I then expand and I, I bring in other. Um, yes, Chrissy, um, absolutely great service. You're right, indeed. Um, Art Life is saying that she recently bought, um, or he, I'm, I'm making assumptions, it could be she or he, uh, recently bought watercolour pencils, um, as so this would be helpful. Oh, fantastic. Um, I have watercolour pencils somewhere, but I'm not sure where they are. Um, and yes, watercolour pencils um, are great to use. There's different ways of using them. Anyway, brushes, round brushes. This is a mop brush. These brushes are absolutely brilliant 
for holding water. So if you're wanting to cover large surface areas, these brushes are brilliant for um, holding uh, a lot of water and pigment once the pigment is in the water. I have all sorts of different sizes. These also come to absolutely fantastic points as well. Um, so that's these brushes. These round brushes here, the graduate, these are the brushes that I started off with. Um, these ones here. They don't hold as much water, which for a beginner, that is probably not such a bad thing um, because it means that you have got much more control over the, the water that you're actually putting on the paper. So it's about giving yourself the most control when you're a beginning. Um, I've kind of got up to the point where I could actually use these, um, but sometimes I still go back to using these depending on um, what kind of control I actually want. And the flat brushes, again, um, these are really good for um, flat washes, getting um, gradients, but I'm sure that there are loads and loads of different um, techniques that can be uh, done with the flat brushes that um, I haven't actually um, probably done uh, because I haven't really done much more than um, portrait. Uh, I see um, uh, At Life is saying you're nearly at a thousand subscribers. Yes, thank you. Thank you for noticing. I am. Um, Tanya, remind me later on to share with you a link to someone that I know that shared how to stretch watercolour paper before painting. She has a special tape and I think you might want to see. Um, thank you, Mona. That's very helpful. I have watched um, so many different uh, videos on how to stretch paper. Um, I think my biggest problem is the tape that I found that actually worked for holding the paint um, then doesn't come off of the paper. And that's that's been my biggest problem. I don't. I like to have the the white border around my uh, watercolor paintings, um, and I think that's been the my biggest problem. Um, I've seen some excellent uh, videos on how to stretch paper. Um, I found that the size of paper that I use, um, a lot of people don't tend to stretch, so um, I don't bother. Um, maybe once I get you know, a little bit further advanced in my uh, watercolouring. Um, water. Oh, thank you, Art Life. <laughs> Art Life is going to go and sub on my other account. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, um, that's that, that. I have that tape. Um, it's gum tape, and um, you wet the tape and you stick it on, and then you have to cut it off at the end. Um, and it's not the kind of it's it's not what I like. It's it, oh, I'm being awkward, I know, but that's um, that's just me. I'm I'm just I, I guess I'll I'll I will probably develop other things as I develop my watercoloring skills. Um, the other type of watercolor tool that people can use, including beginners, um, are these. These are really handy for. Um, out and about. They are um, brushes and they have, you can see the bubble there, they have water in the barrels. Now, again, with the control thing, sometimes these are an absolute pain in the behind uh, because they let out too much water when you don't want too much water. Um, but, you know, at a pinch, if you're really desperate for something, and they, these come in different sizes as well. Um, this one's a bit bashed. There's, there's, kind of hairs coming off of it now because I've used it so much. Um, tend to use these more in sort of like some of my water um, colour journals and things. So likes of this here is a moleskin um, watercolour. Uh, so this is textured. These are some of my watercolour practices from a few years ago. And this one, there's two of these because I, <laughs> I painted this one, thought I was recording it, got to the end of it and realised I wasn't recording at all or whatsoever, so I had to do it again. So there is a video on this. Um, 
and this was when I was practicing sort of florals. Um, and I think that's it. So this is my practice journal. Right. Any questions so far? Art Life has just reached 300 subscribers. That's fantastic, Art Life. Well done. Hello, Madonna. Hello there. Welcome. And uh, Chabuka? Chabuka? Possibly Chabuka because there's a single C. So usually that's um, the, the uh, it's pronounced you when there's a single C. So I'm, I'm assuming it's Chabuka Art, maybe. Yes, it is. Fantastic. Yay. Um, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Right. Um, next thing I'm going to blether on a little bit about, if you don't mind, I mean, obviously, um, you can you can shout out, no, just get on with the painting if you really want me to. Um, but I thought it might be worth um, talking a little bit about the actual paints themselves. Um, over the years, I have increased my um my paint collection this is the very first um watercolors that i owned these are windsor newton and these are cotman these are if i can get them open these are um student paints and from what i've seen from lots of other uh, artists who use them um, these are probably considered kind of high up in terms of um, the quality for being a student paint. That may have changed because I've noticed that there's a shed load more different um, paints that have actually come out since. Um, so that could not, that may not be right anymore. But certainly when I did my um, research, these were the ones to buy um, that were affordable. Now, watercolors come in pans, but they also they also come in tubes. So these are the Cotman in tubes, and these are the Daniel Smith. Now you can see this difference in size. Um, these are a little bit more expensive. Um, in fact, some people consider them to be very expensive. Um, if you do them kind of one tube at a time or maybe a few tubes at a time, they're not that expensive per se. Um, but when you're getting some of their, oops, sorry, wrong way around. If you're getting some of their specialist ones uh, like this, um, that's not wanting to focus for some reason. But these are the um, Prima Tech ones. Uh, and this tube here, this cost me £15. But I don't drink and I don't smoke. So I actually were, I, I was quite happy to, to um, purchase this tube here. And this will last me um, for a few years. It's not like that this gets used within you know a couple of weeks of owning it. Um, it does actually last uh, quite a few years. So Daniel Smith, Cotman. With watercolors, if you've got, um, in fact, these are my Daniel Smiths that I have. There's my um, swatch. I have. Popped. I just recently bought this, hence why it's so new looking. And I put all my Daniel Smith watercolours, including the Prima Tech one down here. Uh, and um, I'm hoping to just build up my collection as I go. So this is a uh, 32 um, yeah, it's got spaces for 32 colours. So that's that. Um, other sort of cheaper paints are things like Decadent Pies. Um, these are by um, Prima Marketing. 
these ones are actually quite fun to use. Um, my two favourite, uh, my favourite colours are, they don't have names, they have numbers. Um, so my favourite colours is this one. This one's quite good for shadowing on faces with this. This is a particularly nice gold. Um, and these two blues are particularly nice as well. So that's the um, decadent pies. And I do have a video of me uh, doing a watercolour painting using this. Uh, it is a, a more whimsical face, um, but it's still watercolour nonetheless. So before I start, um, um, oh, I can't even get my words out today. It's catchy. Chrissy, what have you done to me? I can't get my words out. Before I start painting, is there any questions? Because I think I've covered I've covered the paper, I've covered uh, the um, brushes, I have covered the paints. Um, so, is there any questions? Oh, and thank you, um, Art Life, for uh, loving the bird. Uh, Oh, Linda's waiting with bated breath to hear about the blue bowl. Well reminded, Linda. Right, this blue bowl is ceramic. I bought it from Jackson's Art. It is absolutely beautiful um, in a sort of Chinese design. And it is a palette. It's heavy, by the way. Um, there's the lid. You can use the lid um, as a palette or you can use uh, the little sections. So that's what that is. So I thought, seeing as how um, I'm going to do watercolour, I would use this. And pop that there. In fact, I might just pop that on the floor out of the way. So that's me ready. Um, Sorry, I think I'm going to sneeze. Um, okay. I, uh, I'm not. <laughs> I'll probably sneak up on me. Um, it will. I, I will probably sneeze and then go, sorry. Um, but for now, uh, any questions at all? Um, so, oh, Mona, you've got Van um, Gogh paint, have you? Wow, okay. Um, I've not tried them. There's a lot, like Arteza seem to have a lot of um, uh, people uh, doing reviews and things for them. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, interesting. Very interesting indeed. Right, so let me just pop a few of these things away that I've hauled out. Oh, and excuse me, sorry. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that for like, if you're doing illustrations um, with watercolour, be careful what pen you use. I have carbon ink. Um, I have a, a fountain pen. I have shown this uh, before in um, videos. But if I'm doing um, more illustrative uh, work using um, my watercolours, I will use my carbon pen to, to ink the lines um, because once it's dry, it's waterproof. So just, just a little... Um, just a little hint tip for you there. Right. I think that's us. Let's get down to some painting, shall we? Because I think I've been on for, good grief, I've been on for 25 minutes waffling on about um, the tools and equipment and paint. and. But it just goes to show you that, um, you know, there's there's a lot to talk about and that's only just um watercolor paints there's also other types of watercolor uh, media so things like your uh, neo color twos they're amazing by the way um you know they're watercolor uh, they're um water soluble and and they will um give you a watercolor look um so you know there's there's a whole plethora of things around about watercolor um and uh, Linda um is saying that she uses her um dual brush tombos with water. Awesome results. Yes, I don't have tombos 
But what I do have, um, I bought these years ago um, when I was uh, in my scrapbooking days. And these are um, whispers. I don't even think you can get them anymore. Very similar to Tombow's. Uh, there is a, a brush tip uh, and um, there is a very fine tip at the end. And I will sometimes scribble onto um, like a, like my um, craft mat or something shiny uh, like uh, you know a tile a ceramic tile or something along those lines or maybe a bit of plastic and then use water and uh, use that um, so you know um, there's a whole load of um, different things that you can actually do um, and Mona's got Ecoline fluid watercolors and pens and that's the other type of watercolor that you get you actually get it in little bottles I don't have any um, Dr Martin I think I believe is a particularly good make um, so yeah, there is um, uh, there, there's a whole plethora, a whole shed load of different types of water um, media. Uh, so yeah, it's um, I think sometimes it's good to know um, some hints and tips and a little bit about the media before we get started. Um, and uh, Art Life is saying that. Um, she really wants to get Faber-Castell uh, polychromos uh, coloured pencils. Well, funny you should say that because I have them and they are awesome. Uh, I have uh, both the um, the Prisma colours and the polychromos. And hands down, I would recommend the polychromos over and above um, the uh, Prisma colours. And uh, I do believe uh, that Mona is about to tell you that uh, I enabled her. I encouraged her. I was a I was terrible. I made her spend money. <laughs> yeah, I told her how awesome the um, the polychromos uh, pencils were, uh, and uh, she uh, bought them. And uh, I don't think has uh, looked back. Right, let's get painting. Uh, I the other thing that I want to mention is I do have two um, areas for my water. Um, because when you're painting with watercolours, if your water gets dirty and you put it into your watercolours, if you're wanting a pure colour, it will muddy your colours. So um, it's always good to have two pots for your water. Um, and Linda is saying, I need those polychromos uh, in my life. <laughs> yes, they are They are amazing. They are an oil-based, they're an oil-based, um, uh, Mm, pencil. See, I can't get my words out. They're an oil-based pencil, um, and and that's where it it differs from the uh, Prisma colours, and that's why I prefer them to be Prisma colours. Um, I've also seen that Derwent have brought out an oil-based pencil as well now, um, but I haven't tried them, so I can't comment. But certainly, um, with the oil-based, you get much better layering, uh, and uh, you do not get the same. Um, sort of sealing level. So with Prisma colours, because they're wax, you can only layer so much. And then once you've layered enough, um, the pencils go, nah, you're not layering, you're not layering anymore. Uh, and uh, so the polychromos will actually allow you to um, have just that little bit extra wiggle room with your layers. Um, so uh, yeah, that's... Um, that's not watercolour though, so let's let's not digress. <laughs> Sorry guys. Oh, but one last thing. Um, Chrissy, are you still there? Yes, you're still there. Um, so I want to introduce you to Melvin. Here's Melvin. Melvin is my crochet bear. That he is my studio assistant. He, I even made him his own. I've still to to finish it, but um, I've made him his own little um, apron. <laughs> so this is Melvin. He has his own brush and he has his own apron. So he sits up beside all the brushes. So I'm going to put my hand over the camera so people don't get dizzy when I move it.
I just bashed it. Right, hopefully, hopefully you guys can see this. Um, just. It's moving the cable and things out of the way because if I knock the cable it will make the, the camera shake so hopefully once the camera stops shaking that will be fine so I've already um, sort of mapped out just some of the the areas um, that I needed to to kind of have as a guideline uh, just for this particular demonstration sometimes I won't bother um, with doing um the actual drawing itself sometimes i quite like to do um oh thank you madonna he is cute um just reading the, the comments um at life's asking who has the derwent sharpener i'm debating whether i should get it I don't have the Derwent one, but I do have um, the uh, one that was designed for Prisma colors, and I like it. Um, I've heard lots of good things about um, the Derwent one as well. Um, it's, it's interesting because sharpeners are something that um, I think they're a very personal thing. Some people like one over the other, um, but then that doesn't necessarily mean to say that everybody's going to like it. Um, I think it's a, you really need to try it and see, um, to be fair. Um, now, Linda says, did you say this is this cold or hot press paper? This is hot press paper. This is this. This is the Langton Extra Smooth Hot Pressed um, Paper by Dalla Rowney. It is A4 size and it is £140. Um, I'm going to start buying better watercolour paper. Um, and see what the difference is. So better in terms of, um, like, you know, a higher pound rateage. Um, but at this moment in time, this is what I have got. Now, I've picked this photograph um, because I thought um, that the photograph had some lovely, lovely kind of pink tones to it. It's a little bit um, faded, um, but you know, as I'm just using it as a, a bit of a reference, I'm not copying it. I'm not trying to make it photorealistic. I can work with this um, particular photograph. Um, I also thought it might be nice to, um, you know, have the, the darker sort of area um, that is her hair um, around about uh, the actual frame uh, of the, the photograph, uh, sorry, the, the painting. And um, it's, it's a very front-facing um, picture as well, which I thought might be helpful um, as a demonstration. Oh, Mona, yes, um, thumbs up. Yes, she does say it a lot, that's true, yes. So yes, you're... Um, Um, your beer could potentially be called that, yes. Right, I have here my... Um, uh, Daniel Smith watercolours. I'm thinking I might use my Daniel Smith. Um, but equally, I'm wondering if maybe I actually need to use up the Daniel Smith that is in this watercolour palette here. Ah! Because I... I do actually have Daniel Smith here, but it's a bit kind of everything's all over the place. So maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. I'll just use this one. Right. This is actually um, awkward. I've got no space. Never mind. Right. Okay. I'm not going to be able to show you me mixing the colours, unfortunately, um, because everything is up here a little bit. Now, one of the things that I will do um, with uh, drawing in um, for watercolour is I will use um, pastel pencils because the pastel will actually um, sort of dissolve into the watercolour and so you won't get any harsh lines. Um, so that's kind of um, where I'm at at the moment.
and it's been a long time since I've done um, a watercolour. Um, <laughs> so I take it you don't like that idea then, Mona. <laughs> right, I'm going to um, think about what um, colours I'm going to, to mix. Um, Mm, mm, where do I start? Uh, I'm thinking maybe I might just go with I'll probably go with a little bit of the um the burn uh no the yellow ochre um perhaps. Maybe a little bit of the, the red and the yellow. Um, I'm just going to kind of mix them together and see. Sometimes a little bit of burnt umber um, is helpful. Now, I don't think I've got burnt umber in here. No, I don't. I only have burnt sienna light um, and the yellow ochre. I don't have any of the burnt umber in this particular palette. The burnt umber that I have is actually in my Windsor and Newton. Um, so I'm thinking, right, let's get some paint out. Um, going to use the, the yellow ochre, I think. And a little bit of Right. So the um, the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre I've just put in with a lot of water into the middle sort of area. Now bear in mind that um, when you're using watercolour, If you are looking for something dark, try not to do it right at the beginning of the, the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just put on water first, of, first and foremost across her face. And that just wets the paper. And what that will allow me to do is hopefully get some really nice, sort of smooth, um, gradients and things going on. Because watercolour will only go where there's water. So when it starts to run and drip, it tends to stop. Just pick up some of that. There. I don't know if I've watered it enough, but as I said, this is been a long time since I've done this. So this could go horribly wrong. But I'm here to tell you that it's actually okay if things go horribly wrong. Right, uh, Mona saying that she really likes the um, face. Thank you. So, as you can see, as I'm putting this on, it's actually really very light. It is dripping a little bit, um, but. That's okay. Now I can see that there's a definite shadow here, so I'm kind of concentrating some of it around where, where the shadows are likely to be. And then I'm going to find my nice 
pinky bit and I'm actually going to just drop that in where I can see it on the cheek area. So maybe just a little bit too. That's okay. Because the thing with watercolours is that, you, believe it or not, you can actually um, layer with watercolours. But the secret to that is you really, really, really need to let that dry. So I'm just cleaning off my brush um, because what I'm wanting to do is go in with some water and soften some of the harsh lines that have kind of occurred. So I'm just going in again. Um, with a little bit of the the red. And what happens if you do it, and it's happening to me now, um, so this is a good opportunity for a learning. If you do it too soon before you have actually allowed anything to dry, what can potentially happen is that you can end up lifting off um, the paint. So I think what I might um, do at the moment while we're waiting is maybe looking at um, doing the, the lip colour. There we go. I think that might be because this the upper lip is much more much darker than this lower lip. So I'm really just I think I've managed to contaminate the wrong water. Whoops. <laughs> oh, oh never mind. So you know it's um There's a start. And there's a, a harsh line up here, so I'm just going to go in with the water and I'm just taking that harsh line out. So you can see that, you know, even if you think there's hard, harsh, you know, lines going there, um, you can then go in and actually take them out.
And I'm just going to start building up the colour in here because this is this is actually much darker. Um, And there's a little bit under the eye here that's that's darker. And again in here, it's darker. And on this nose here, it's going to be darker. Under there. And then there's a shadow that's there. Again, as I said, you know. And just play about with it. That's quite a harsh line here. So I'm going in with a damp brush and I'm just softening that line. So you can see it's starting to take shape. Um, just checking the messages. Um, Madonna says that uh, she loves using watercolour, but has thrown many of the messes away in the trash. Uh, learning experiences, absolutely. There's a fine line as to how much water to use. That's my biggest issue with watercolour. Yes, I think it's most people's issue with watercolour, if I'm totally honest. Um, I think um, it's very, very difficult to get it right. And I'm just going up here. And as you can see, you know, this this brush kind of takes on a life of its own. Uh, and you can see the, the fine, oh, perhaps you can't. There, maybe you can now. You can see the fine, the fine um, tip that comes from Maybe you can't. I don't know. You tell me. Can you see that fine tip? Looks rather blurry to me. And sometimes it's okay just to leave in harsh lines. You know, it doesn't. Uh, It doesn't always require you to take a you know what's the word I'm looking for it doesn't always require you to soften the lines um, sometimes it's actually okay just the way it is. Right, so that requires a little bit darker here. So I'm just going to I'm 
unfortunately, as you can see, what's happened there is I do have a line that's not really wanting to go away. Um, but, you know, that's that's OK. It happens sometimes. Um, and maybe I'll be able to get to, to fix it on the next time round. Um, Add a little bit more red. And I'm quite happy to put something in the there we go, that's it. So I'm just leaving this line here. Um I'll bring this up just a little bit more because the shadow actually goes a little bit further up. Now, hopefully you can still hear me because I've I've got um, a little bit quieter because I I am aware that it's not always that helpful to be too loud because I stand I sit right next to the mic, which then results. in it being a bit distorted and too loud. So hopefully you guys can still hear me. Um, right. Um, so Linda's saying, it does really come down to practice. I've already said that, didn't I? Love seeing the depth of the face coming through so soon. Oh, thank you, Linda. Um, Mona's nipped out, but she's come back. Um, Linda says, it's okay. I'm enthralled watching. This is great. Oh, fantastic. Sound is good, says Mona. Brilliant. So I'm just, just messing about with getting sort of darker. Um, shadow colours. Now one of the things that you can actually do um, is you can actually use things like purple uh, for shadows. That's um, perfectly acceptable. And I'm just, as you can see, just sort of here and here and here, there, there's some really quite um, some really quite dark areas. And the thing with watercolor is when you really water it down, it still isn't particularly dark so you can see here how it just automatically just lightens it the moment it hits because it's not particularly Particularly um, dry. I'll get the, my words out eventually. So 
it's it's kind of starting to to come along. Um, still, really needs to uh, darken up. Needing to get much, much, much more pigment on the brush. Um, probably really needing some more of that pinkness here because I can see there. It's starting to get there. It's not very easy, but it's getting there. And I think um, I'm just going to get a little bit of blue. I probably use the lighter blue, um, but then I'm going to kind of muddy it up a little bit. Kind of make it a bit more grey and then oops <laughs> that's actually wet um, I'm just going to go in at the eyes and I'm just going to start the first layer of the eyes because as you can see as it's starting to um, dry you're getting a completely different um, feel I'm just going to go in over that as well and I think Whilst this is a, a really good brush and I get some really good details, it tends to hold a lot of water. Um, so what can tend to happen is that it will end up um, being either too damp or, you know, not enough pigment. Because even when I put loads of pigment on, there's still too much water in the brush and blah, blah, blah. So sometimes I will then um, swap over to one of my other brushes that don't actually hold um, necessarily a lot of water um, so I'm going to pick up a little bit more um, pigment and try and get a darker um, and the thing with watercolour is that it's really about leaving the white areas as your highlights. Because when you're using watercolour, you go from the lightest to the darkest as a general rule of thumb. There are many artists who don't do that, um, but that's that's just the way they, they practice and how they've um, got to that point where they're actually able to do that. And that's perfectly fine too. As I said, I'm not a watercolour um, expert. This is not my forte. Um, I'm much better
with acrylics. That's not to say that I won't that I won't attempt to do anything with watercolours. I love what love working with watercolours. Um seeing some colors just adding them in i mean even even that um is probably needing to be a little bit darker even in here And sometimes you can find that you can lift colour if you think that it needs it. So you just basically, I've got a cloth here and all I'm doing is taking the water off so my brush is dry. And then as I sweep, what, that hap what happens is that it encourages the water on the page to um, come off. Well, hello, michael Ann. Hello. Um, Chrissy says, I think personally watercolours are harder on your brain when you're used to, say, acrylics, if you get me. Yes, absolutely. Um, they work so differently um, to watercolours without a shadow of a doubt. So I'm just going in with a little bit darker again. On her top lip. And then at the very top, there's a little bit here. seems to be pinker. So I've got that in. Um, and I think I will get this in a little bit darker as well, because it does seem to be much darker there. Because this is now sort of drying a little bit better, this is probably a good time to go in and expand that area that really wasn't wanting to to be right earlier on. And I think I'll add just a little bit of that purple that I was using earlier on. So just in there. And then be adding just a little bit more of that pink. So, you know, it's it's kind of getting there. And the, the thing with watercolours is that it really is so easy to 
to overwork. I probably shouldn't have gone in there with um, that darker color because it's still too. Still too damp. I'm just lifting some of the color here. Um, to to help it. So you can see the nose is starting to sort of take on that 3D look. Um, right, just checking the the um, the comments. Um, All right, Chrissy says, I like the medium, just need to put more effort in just getting time to practice more. And that that's that's it in a nutshell, Chrissy. I think it's it's all down to to practice essentially. Um and it's it's much more difficult, I think. Um to practice um with watercolors. Um it's much easier to kind of feel a bit more defeated with watercolours. Much easier to feel defeated with watercolours. And when people feel defeated, they tend not to use them again. And that is kind of understandable. I mean, I'm not saying that um, you know people are wrong for feeling defeated. It's it's natural. Um, I mean, I, I'm total honesty. I'm I'm feeling quite uncomfortable myself right now um, because I don't know which way this is actually going to go. And there is a danger with watercolours to overwork them. And I think I'm probably in that camp of I tend to overwork my watercolours. But, you know, that's, it is what it is. I'm just trying to build up that um, this shadow here, which is actually not that easy. Um, in fact, I wonder if maybe. Maybe it might be a good idea to kind of, uh, not a plug here, can I just say I follow a friend of mine called Colin Walters. He has given me loads of tips on this medium. Hope you don't mind me saying this. No, not at all, Chrissy. Not at all. I said right up front, I'm not a watercolour expert. Um, I really, I just try and use what I know and kind of feel my way um, around um, painting watercolour. Now that's better. Now that it's dry a little bit more, I can actually get I 
can actually get the darkness that I'm looking for. This is a neutral grey that I'm using here. My favourite watercolour artist um, has to be um, Agnes Cecile. I think that's how it's her, her name's pronounced. I love her work. Absolutely love her work. There we go. I think that's starting to look a little bit better. We're kind of um, building things up. And it does, um, you know, without, without a doubt, it does take a lot of practice. I still feel very uncomfortable um, most of the time with watercolours because I never actually know what they're going to do. And there's this bit here. There's a, a harsh line here. I don't want it to be harsh, but it's become harsh. So I guess one of the purposes of this video is really to, to kind of show and prove that actually You know, it's perfectly normal for you to have more fails than, than anything. But it's 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 getting there. Um, so Chrissy says, my fear in watercolour is not making it look flat, if you get me. Um, nose are difficult to get right. Yours looks fantastic. Oh, thank you, Dina. Thank you. Um, Chrissy's saying, um, but if you layer, it looks wrong to me. Um, Watercolours you can layer. Um, and it's, it's about layering in the right way. And in order to be able to put a second layer on top of the first layer, you really need to allow it to dry. Um, I know watercolours dry really quite quickly, in fact, very quickly. However, um, in order to be able to layer, you actually have to allow the, the paper to dry as well. Otherwise, all that happens is that the pigment then just um, sort of disperses. Uh, and so in order to be able to do your layering, um, you do actually need to allow even the paper to dry, not just the, the surface layer. Does that make sense? Um, Oh, there we go. Mona's just said exactly the same thing. Um, so Chrissy is saying, 
I like the soft look. I don't want it to look thick if you get that. Yeah, I mean, I get I get what you're saying. Um, I guess it's about um, really considering your your strokes and the colours that you use. And I think in order to be able to do a watercolour um, with one layer um, will take a lot of practice and knowledge of the medium. I think it's possible, um, and that's my that's my take on it anyway, is that um, there are lots of people out there um, who can uh, and um, do uh, fantastic watercolour pieces um, in one sitting. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so I'm just changing the red um, instead of it being the really pinky red I'm just trying the other type red just to see um, if I can get the variation in the lip that I'm looking for um, As I said, it's it's not something that I think that I can necessarily teach anybody, really, um, because apart from anything else, I actually um, I'm not a, I'm not an expert in watercolor. It's 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 kind of obvious to see that. But I do try. In fact, I think I'll I'll swap my brush again. I think I'll go back to to using this one. See if I can't. Um, the other thing is as well is that I'm not used to this particular palette, believe it or not. Um, Because any of my portraits that I've done before um, have actually been with my Windsor Newton. Right, okay. So again, I'm just attempting to lift some of that color off. And the problem with that is that it does tend to um, makes it look overworked, and that's exactly what's happening here. It is very overworked, unfortunately. But that's what happens.
very, very easy to get a fail um, with watercolours, unfortunately. And I can see this being a bit of a fail. But, you know, that's okay. That is okay. It happens. And I'm not going to fret over it. Because the whole idea of this is to show you that it's okay. There we go. It might look okay once it's dry. It's looking a bit funky just now, but it's not the first time that I've thought something looked awful and then actually when it dried, it didn't look quite so bad. Um, Um, hang on. Uh, I'm trying to read Mona's. I will share the link to my friend. Do not fire me as mod. No, that's fine. I'm not going to fire you. Share away. Share away. Um, at the end of the day, we are all here to help one another. And so share away I'm thinking um, I very much doubt I'm going to do much more to um, this particular painting um, possibly Just darkening this bit here. I think it's important to at least attempt something. And um, I can feel underneath my hand that although it's looking drier than it was, it's by no way that dry. There we go. And again, it's it, it's kind of looking a little bit strange, but I actually, I've found that with experience, it's actually, it tends to, to look better once it's fully dry. Occasionally, it's, it kind of still looks as bad when it's dry, but ugh, do you know, it's, it is what it is.
And sometimes you just have to take the plunge and practice. Because it doesn't always work out. But you do then start to learn. Just where things work and where they don't work. Uh, Mona says, I could never do a portrait like this. I have to practice some more years. You go, Tanya. <laughs> Chrissy's saying, strange where. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. You really are too kind. It's... If you compare it to my um, my acrylic work, it looks strange. Um, there's no two ways about it. It does actually look strange. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is, and it's okay. Um, I'm going to definitely add some more. pinks in here because I think it's needing it um, Maybe just a bit too much pigment on there, but I wasn't really happy with the lack of red and colour in the face. Whoops. So there we go. That's probably a bit better. Um, There. Because it's it's very easy when you're doing this, as I said, to overwork or to not get the right um, colours in or, you know, um, that kind of thing. But I would urge people, if you want to give watercolour a go, Give it a go and just remember that it is possible to fix things to a certain degree. Sometimes it's going to look a bit funky and other times it's going to look absolutely fine. Just trust your instincts. Just go for it. I think it's um, starting to to get there. I'm going to go back to my more sort of detailed dish brush 
um, maybe get a little bit more of the darker brown. How are we doing? Oh, he's shouting at me now. <laughs> Tania, hear us. She is amazing. Yes, Tania, listen to our voices. <laughs> hear us roar. She's wonderful. Oh, well, thank you. I really do appreciate that. Definitely just um, attempting to get a darker brown. up in her eyes um, here. Um, going to get some purple again. Oh, I'm going to try and get some purple again anyway. Because uh, that's usually a really good way to get in some shadows. I think definitely needed here. Right. So as you can see, it's it's kind of starting to to come along, and I think I think what. I do just as much as most people do is I fiddle with it too much and don't really allow it to um, don't really allow it to actually dry and I think the the drying is key so I'm going to um, take my own advice and I'm going to attempt to let that dry. Um, There we go. Right, going to let that lie and let it dry. Um, uh, Chrissy's saying, now, see, I'd leave it now. I'd be scared I'd mess it up. Um, is that right or wrong? Don't know. Uh, I think it's it's right for you at that moment in time and for anybody who wants to do um what they're doing um it's about it being right for for you and so if you think just leaving it as is is the right thing to do then you leave it as is um now you can see up here her eyes are pretty much one color. Uh, so I am going to attempt 
to get a little bit more variation. So I'm going to try and add a bit more variation to her eyes. So I've just really done a much darker brown. And I am applying it to the eyes. And so when that dries, it will hopefully um, give us a little bit of a variation in the colours. Um, I might even just simply add some blue and just add it again at different and then allow it to dry. So um, I don't know if you guys are seeing this or not um, properly. Um, would you like me to um, take the camera off its mount and uh, move it a little bit closer? Uh, So thank you guys. I'm really um I'm really glad that you're you're enjoying this. Um it is one of the one of the more scarier things I've done live on YouTube. Um I've done watercolor portraits before but uh, usually um time lapse. Uh so right so um you're wanting me to move the camera. Right that's fine. I will move the camera so if you bear with me this might be um okay now let me see there we go is that better you guys can you see where i'm going with this is that helpful Can you see the difference in the colours of her eyes? There's that lighter brown, there's the darker brown, and then we've got the highlights. And you can see I've got some harsh lines, I've got some soft lines. Um, there in lips, again, you know, some harsh lines, some soft lines. And I suspect that um, this is actually going to look even different again. So let me just pop this back up. Um, I'll do this for the people who don't like to feel dizzy. Okay, hopefully that'll be, there we go. Um, there we are, might just, Shove that along just a little bit. There we go. So that's kind of where we're at at this moment in time. I'm thinking about her hair um, and what I'm going to do with her hair. But I think um, in the meantime, I will maybe just... 
do her eyebrows. These are probably a little bit greyer than I was planning to go with this, but that's okay. Um, we will just have to We just have to work with it. There we go. I mean, the whole idea of you being here and seeing me work on this is is a little bit of everything. Um, you know, I think with with anything, we all have the things that we are good at, the things that we're okay at, um, the things that we enjoy more than anything else. And I would love, dearly love, to be better at watercolour than I am. I know you're saying that it's stunning and I know you think that it's it's lovely and I, I really appreciate that and so, you know, thank you for that. However, um, it's... It is what it is, and it's for me. It's it's an okay level. It's not um, it's not garbage, but I would like to get better. And I think the more I do um, this, uh, the better I will get at it. And I want to show you that that is what's possible. Um, I also wanted to sort of show you the differences between um, you know maybe uh, between actually you know if you if you think about it in this way, right, how many times have we been on a website? Have we been on like sort of a Facebook group or something? And somebody posts up this absolutely gorgeous um, to die for painting and says, oh, I'm a beginner. Uh, I think this is rubbish. Um, and, you know, you're kind of left wondering, well, you know, is this really a person's beginner painting? Um Consider some of my um, acrylic work, right? You think about how my acrylic work compares to it. Now, let me just grab one of my portraits. There we go. There's an acrylic piece, right? Now, my acrylic work is far um, better than my watercolour work. Uh, but that doesn't mean to say that I don't enjoy watercolour and that I don't enjoy the result um, that I get from watercolour. It just simply means that I've, I'm much more practised with the acrylic. Um, but it also kind of, um, I think, really demonstrates that we can't necessarily believe everything that we read on the internet. I hope that's making sense um, because whilst, yes, there might be some people who are a little bit more, um, they pick it up quicker, um, you know, they can they can get quite good at it um, quicker. That doesn't necessarily mean to say that they are a 
quotations, right? quotations, beginner. Um, and I, I think we need to, to remind ourselves that just because somebody says it on the, the internet doesn't necessarily make it true. There may be some people out there who might consider themselves to be beginners that um, can show you some really nice work. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I think we need to um, be wary of people who say that they're beginners when maybe they might not be. Um, I mean, uh, Mona says, well, I do not agree, Tanya, looking at them side by side. I think your watercolour portrait is just as stunning. Oh, thank you. Well, maybe I'm just more comfortable um, painting with um, acrylics than watercolours then perhaps. Maybe, maybe, that's, um, maybe that's more to the point. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, Dina says, yes, I think we are all too hard on ourselves. When we are painting, we have a perfection in our minds. People who see our work see the beauty that we as artists sometimes overlook. Um, beauty equals imperfect. Uh, Linda says, it's you, Tania. Um, Mona says, true, Dina. I'm for sure my worst uh, worst critic. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I, I can be um, my worst critic as well, uh, without a, a doubt. Um, and I, I guess I'm just trying to, um, you know, show and demonstrate that we can all have those thoughts and feelings, um, but, you know, that doesn't make us you know, bad artists. Because, yeah, I, I might be admitting to some of my thoughts and feelings, but that doesn't mean that I'm I'm allowing it to, to bother me because if I allowed it to bother me, I wouldn't be live right now. Um, so it's it's more a, a what I'm hoping to achieve with doing this and admitting these things with you guys um, is really, I'm hoping it will demonstrate that you too can it's okay to have these thoughts and feelings. Um, and that actually, we can all move on from it. I hope that's making sense. I really do hope that is making sense to people. Right. I'm going to try and darken this up again and go in with a more specific line here because there is one there. Um, same with here. There, getting the, the shadow in a little bit better. And the thing with watercolours is the more water you add, the thinner they get, um, the, the lighter they get. Um, and so if we want something darker, we really need to not have so much water.
Right. I think we're kind of getting to a point where we could do the hair. Now, I have two thoughts on this. Um, right. Now, let's see. Um, it is making sense, Tanya. I'm so glad. Um, Dina says, uh, for me, it's hard to separate the feelings of I want to improve with I think my work is rubbish. It's always a fine line. You're right. Um, uh, Mona says, anyone that paints live is brave. It can't be easy. Um, uh, it's making sense. I'm so glad. Um, I for sure could not paint live. I would mess up a lot because I would be so nervous. Uh, Dina says, agree. Uh, we as artists put our soul on the canvas paper and it is very raw. It is a special thing. Um, Michael says, I think I'd have a panic attack if I had to paint live. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, Chrissy says, don't forget, guys, different eyes see different things in art. Just saying, yes, you're absolutely right, Chrissy. Um, different um different people do see different things and um for everyone that thinks this is a good painting there'll be somebody that thinks this is a rubbish painting um and um i'm okay with either uh because at the end of the day i can't control what other people think um i can only control me um i can't control other people uh and um that is just That is just the way it is. I'm just softening that line just a little bit more. It was uh, starting to, to dry just a bit harsher than I really wanted it to. So we have a choice. Do we go with just um, a dark uh, for her hair? Or do we go with the um the prima tech um sugar light genuine which is this one here i don't know it's not really showing up particularly well on camera but it is um a sparkly one um the moon glows a kind of sort of purpley gray um so maybe i can do a little bit of the moon glow and a little bit of the um the sugar light genuine, which is a kind of purpley, sparkly. Um, so it looks like you're still talking about lives, and um, Madonna says, I couldn't do a live uh, for sure. I have the utmost respect for you guys that do these. I would bumble all over myself trying to talk and paint too shy um yeah well there's very little shy about me I have to say <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not um okay so what do you think guys um shall we just uh, go for the the moon glow and the um sugar light genuine because I'm kind of that's what I'm thinking. So there's the there's the moon glow. And I'm thinking if I can get it if I can get it on dark enough. I think this would be a really good one. There we go. I think that's actually a really nice one. Now let's um, let's get some water in in the Prima Tech one. Let's get 
let's let it um, activate a little bit. Now it doesn't look much here, um, but I think once it's actually on and I can show you it once it's dry, I think we'll get the I think we'll get the sparkly effect. I can already see the sparkly effect, which is kind of cool. I'm liking this. Right. So this is the the sugar light. And I'm using and I'm mixing it with the moon glow, which is a little bit darker. And this, the sugar light one, that's the one that was £15. Pound. Um, does the moon glow sparkle? No, the moon glow doesn't sparkle. The genuine, uh, the sugar light genuine does. But the moon glow doesn't. But the moon glow seems to go on a little bit darker. So I've... Um, decided to mix the two. Because the moon glow seems to be just that little bit darker, but the, the um, sugar light has sparkle in it. So mixed together, it should It should give us a good effect. So there we go. That seems to be that. Now, again, it's wet. I don't think you're going to get to see the sparkle. Um, but we'll see. Uh, Michael says, yes, moon glow is lovely. Be right. That's okay, Chrissy. <laughs> um, once the hair is in, you'll see um, it like we do, maybe. Mona says, yes, very nice. Uh, Laura says, love a bit of sparkle. Um, I've already answered Michael's question. Um, uh, I also just got Amethyst Genuine, uh, so sparkly and pretty. Yes, the Amethyst Genuine's a nice one as well. Um, I like um, the Fuchite, um, which is a, a green kind of sparkly, um, but I've still to buy that one yet. Uh, so, yeah, it's... Um, It's one of those things. All right, I think what I'll do is I will just kind of finish off. Um, with darkening. Her chin a little bit. And the underneath. Um, because I think. I think we really need to 
get the difference between her and her chin. So her face underneath of her chin really needs to be a lot darker. Um, right. Uh, a little bit of blue and a little bit of red. So hopefully that will help us to get this dark area here. And as you can see, this, this brush here, whilst it's great for details, it's really rubbish for any, any sort of size um, area that you want to. That's why I'm better off using this one. So this one doesn't really hold any water, so it doesn't hold any pigment. This one um, does actually go over um, some larger areas. Uh, right. So I think I am going to call it done. Um, that is a neutral grey colour that I'm just putting on just now at the the edge to to show the hairs or at least the direction of the hairs. So I'm just just putting in a, a few here and there. Just to give some direction uh, to the, the hair. And I think um, I think that's it. I think I'm going to call this done. Uh, as I said, um, you know, I've I've had uh, some oh my goodness, this isn't working moments. Uh, but you know, I've um, persevered with it. And uh, got there in the end. I'm just adding, just again, I'm just <sighs> just fiddling now, is what I'm doing. But sometimes just that little last extra whilst it can potentially be oh my goodness what have I done that's actually not helpful other times it's actually really what the painting was needing to bring things out so that's really brought out her eyes I think um I could mess about with her lips a bit more, but I'm not going to because, um, quite frankly, I think I have gone on enough um, in this video. And I really appreciate that you guys have taken the time to spend with me. Uh, so let me just stop you guys from getting dizzy hello <laughs> there hello 
that's two hours and five minutes, in fact, two hours and six minutes, we'll call it, um, to do a portrait. Now, I'm hopeful that once it's sort of dry a little bit more, we might have half a chance of seeing the sparkle. It's, I don't think it's dry enough yet to see the sparkle. Maybe if I do it like that. Nope, it's not. I think it really needs to be dry to see the sparkle. Oh, and probably needs to have direct light as well. Because I can just see the sparkle and no more. Anywho, there we go. Um, Linda says, I have learned a lot from watching you. Um, thank you. You're very welcome, Linda. Um, Mona says, what did I tell you, Tanya? I said, I have faith in you. That is very much appreciated, Mona. Thank you. Uh, Chrissy is saying, hello. Um, well done, Tanya. Live as well. Amazing. Love. I'm I'm really um really very humbled and very touched by all your uh love and um support and oh my goodness look at the state of my hair. <laughs> That's what happens when you go into the shower, wash it and then just let it dry, it does its own thing. Um so yeah, I um I, I hope that uh, in sort of telling you some of my thoughts of, of how I'm actually feeling about it. But ignoring those thoughts and just carrying on anyway um, it is showing you that, you know, if I can do it, so can you. Um, because we all have these thoughts. Um, and, you know, uh, I, I'm thinking actually this might be a good time to do this. If I can find it, I will show you. Um, I'm down underneath the table. I am here. I'm looking for something. Right. Okay, this is not my first painting ever, um, but uh, it it is um, it is a bad painting. So. That is practicing watercolors. This was a few years ago, um, and it is. I mean, it's not that ugly, um, but it's it's not that. Yeah, it's. I just wanted to show you that. Um, you know, it's. It doesn't matter what you produce. So long as you had fun at the time producing it. Now, this is not going on my wall. It's not um it's not a it's not a piece that's meant to be on the wall. This is my practice. Um you know, this this is um it's just it's just that. It's practice. It's learning how the watercolors actually interact with the paper, it's learning um you know, because there's no point in me showing you all the fabulous work that I do, um, because then you won't believe me that I ever do not so fabulous work. Um, and the truth is, is that, you know, we, we all at some point do not so fabulous work. And I'm here to tell you that that is OK. Um, uh, Mona says that she loves it, too. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's it, it, it's all, it's all about practice. Um, so 
I'm, I don't think that I'm, we're going to be able to see the sparkle. This is one of my earlier watercolours. Um, this is, uh, actually there's a video on this uh, showing uh, me doing this. This was one of those, um, this was a breakthrough moment. When I painted this um, for an Art Sherpa collaboration, um, I, I could not believe how awesome this looked. I was just like, oh my goodness, look at that. It looks amazing. It really looks like him, blah, blah, blah. However, um, you know, it can still be improved even from here. Um, but at the time that I painted it, I was like, yes, you know, considering the, the other ones that I was uh, practicing, you know, they, they, they are nothing compared to this. And so, I, again, I'm showing you this um, because I think it's important to know and to realise that it's, it is about practice. <laughs> Pure and simple. Right, um, now that I've blethered on um, more than enough, uh, is there any questions? Does anybody want to ask me anything about the girl? Um, is there anything anybody would like to see closer? Is there anything at all that anybody would like to talk about? Oh. Um, Chabuka Art is saying, uh, great to see you painting. You did a great job. Thank you. Oh, hi, Art Life. Welcome back. So any questions on the brushes that I was using? Any questions on um, the paints I was using? Any questions at all? I don't think you're going to be able to... Um, let me see. Oh, I'm hiding behind the... I'm going to grab the light and see if I can shine the light directly on. Do the painting to see if we can get it to sparkle. I'm not sure. Is anybody seeing sparkle at all? I can see it but it's a very kind of hint of a sparkle. It's not like glitter. It's more like a kind of a shimmer than a sparkle. Well, that's a shame if you can't see it. Yeah, it's... The camera's really not picking it up. Yeah. It's a shame really, because it's it's nice. It's just a, it's it's kind of a little like um iridescence. It's kind of sort of subtle. Um it's not like all glitter um and sparkle, but it's definitely there. Right, there we go. Um, Chrissy's asking, so you're going to leave it as it is? Yes, I'm going to leave it as it is. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's it done. If I'm, um, Chrissy says, put it on Instagram when dry. Yes, I will do. Uh, it looks heavy. It is actually heavy. Um, it, uh, the, the panel is a little bit heavy. Um, 
Uh, just seeing if there's any other questions. Do -do -do. They need to make cameras that pick up sparkle and metallics. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. Sometimes, sometimes cameras will pick it up. I suspect that um, because that one is a little bit. Um, I don't know, um, subtle is the word, I think. Um, I think that's why it doesn't really like to um, pick it up on camera. Any other questions? Because if there's not, I, I think that um, that is probably, in fact, ooh, any suggestions? Um, because I'm going to be hopefully going live on Friday again. Um, Um, Chris is asking, how would it look uh, on rough paper? Um, would it work um, a portrait? Yes, it would. Um, and the reason I say that is because um, this is my moleskin um, journal and it's rough paper. So uh, if you can see that, you can see that there is definitely uh, a roughness to it. And, oops, <laughs> sorry. There is uh, one of my watercolour portraits. So, yes, I would say that, um, in fact, I would actually say that probably rough paper will probably be more forgiving uh, than smooth. Um, so there's there's another one. Her nose is a little bit crooked and strange, um, but it is what it is. So that's that's that. So yeah, I think um, I think portraits do work um, on rough paper. I think, I, I actually think that the rough paper is probably a little bit more forgiving than the smooth, if I'm totally honest. Um, Chrissy says, I like that one. Which one was that? That one? Or that one? Book of Art says safer sketchbook tour. Do you know I have loads of sketchbooks and I don't actually think I have actually finished any of them. I've I've got lots of art journals, sketchbooks, and I, I tend to kind of start them and then I don't really kind of continue. Um, and like I started on this one. So that was um pencils and then that was uh, a bit of kind of watercolour play that I was doing, um, a bit more whimsical. Uh, and then that's it. I haven't done any more. And I've had this for a couple of years. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm really bad for having loads of journals on the go and not finishing any of them. Maybe one of these days I will actually finish one and um, do a sketchbook tour. Uh, but the problem is my sketchbooks um, are very, um, in fact, ooh, I think this one's, I think this one's finished. Um, this one uh, is probably about four years. In fact, yeah, it'll be about four years old now. Um, so this was the very, 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 very first uh, acrylic face that I ever attempted. Um, four years ago. So this was me starting to get to know acrylics. This was um, me trying to do, um, trying my hand at sort of mixed media type stuff, but I didn't actually have mixed media. So there's some uh, more watercolour practice, some watercolour play. Um, 
Uh, Michael was asking if you do mixed media. Yes, um, I do mixed media. There are some videos um, where I've done some uh, mixed media. Uh, let me see. So there's uh, mixed media. Um, there's mixed media. Uh, there we go. There's some washi tape. There's some mixed media. So yes, I do. Um, there's there's some. And my favourite mixed media at the moment are my um, Tatanite tag trade dolls. There's a, a video of these uh, on. YouTube. So these are all based around this, which is our current challenge at the moment. And there is a full real time video on how to make this dotty doll in my Facebook group. Um, that is the February challenge at the moment. And I wanted to um, do some mixed media tags um, that can be swapped. So these are the Tatanite tag trade dolls. So the faces um, are drawn and painted or um, I think I, I used uh, alcohol markers for these faces. The, um, these are drawn on stitches. So it's fake blanket stitches to make it look like the faces are sewn on. Uh, there's a little dangle at the bottom and a little tag at the top. And as I said, there is a, a video on how to make these. And they are just um, these cards uh, and uh, they can be used uh, to journal on the back. So they would go absolutely uh, lovely uh, in um, journal. So this pink here, that's pa paint pens. They're Posca pens. Uh, there are different uh, paints at the back. There's Tim Holtz paints. Uh, there's stamping. Uh, again, that's a stamped butterfly. So, yeah, um, that's uh, the mixed media stuff that I've got on the go at the minute. They are pretty awesome. Um, and, yeah, um, that's perfectly okay too. Um, you can use uh, real tags uh, for yours, Mona. You can use whatever you want. I just happen to have these lying around. Uh, so I decided to, to use them. I have got um, uh, some more uh, on the go. Uh, and uh, I'm actually uh, in a, a swap uh, with someone that um, shh, it's a secret. <laughs> so there will be um, a collaboration video coming up uh, very soon. Um, so, yeah. Um, so we've got some watercolour, there's more watercolour. And this, it shows you that it's really, I use these as practice. This isn't, I'm not making, um, you know, absolutely awesome pieces of art here. I'm just practising. I'm just looking at what I can do and um, what uh, looks cute. I like this. this. This really, I thought that was cute. Um, this is uh, got a very strange horse here. Don't know what was going on there. Um, and there was me um, looking at how I can alter that stamp. Uh, this was a practice uh, for a video uh, where I drew on the lines and then uh, used um, I used these. And there is a there is a video where I've used these to draw the lines and then used the water. Um, to soften and do the shadowing. So there's a video available of that. Um, in fact, it's this one here. I actually did a video. Oh, it's a, a while ago now. It's, um, I can't remember how many years ago I did it. Um, there was me um, starting a drawing to be able to do a painting, but never actually got down, down to doing the painting. This one I've already shown you. And this one, 
And again, that's just a drawing, never got around to painting, just a drawing, never got around to painting. Another practice of drawing, um, more practice of, of drawing. Uh, just a different um, type of whimsical face. That was the start of something but never got finished. The drawing of my daughter. Um, again, never actually got around to painting it. Uh, this one I've started but not finished. I was practicing with uh, my pastels. That was just a, a cute drawing. More practicing drawing. Practicing my watercolors. More drawing. Um, that was a, a self portrait without the glasses. <laughs> Um, and that's it. That says at the end. So that is the only one that I've actually finished. And I use my sketchbook as just that. It is practice. It is. It's a place I don't care whether I mess up in. Sometimes you end up with nice things, and other times you end up with, eh, okay, I'll move on. So Mona saying uh, we need to do a collab sometime this year. Just saying yes, we do need to get that organised. Mona, uh, Madonna saying that tags were really cool. Um, uh, Chibuka art. I have to watch the tutorial, make my own bookmarks. They're very pretty. Oh, thank you. Um, let me see if I can. Unless Mona's quicker than me, um, let me see if I can get you the the link for that. Uh, video, 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 video. There we go. Oh, great, it's tough tonight. Oh, that would be my voice. <laughs> right, copy, paste. There you go. There's the link for you um, for the um, for the for the tags. Hopefully that link should work. It better work. Let me know if it doesn't. Um, uh, right. You are one second faster this time. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh well, never mind. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Right. Um, I have uh, probably blethered on uh, long enough. Uh, if there is no other burning questions, thank you, everybody, for coming and hanging out with me. I really do appreciate Without you guys watching, this channel wouldn't be what it is today. Um, I am very near my thousand uh, subscriber mark and I am so excited. I have been at this for a good number of years and, um, you know, there are times where I wanted to give up and just think, well, I'm just not cut out for this. Um, but it was because of very good friends of mine um, who have encouraged me to keep going um, that I did. Uh, and um, I am now almost at the thousand uh, subscriber mark. Uh, and I am absolutely thrilled to bits. I am hoping uh, to get to the thousand uh, subscribers. And when I do, um, I will no doubt um, be celebrating with a giveaway. I haven't decided what my giveaway is going to be yet. I know that um, I did uh, a giveaway um, where I offered a portrait um, and uh, Linda, who was here earlier, uh, she was the winner and she got her portrait painted in acrylics by me. Um, so I'm kind of thinking maybe I might do um, a, a portrait give another portrait giveaway. I don't know. Um, you might be bored with that. You might decide that you want something else. Um, we will see. Uh, I'm just trying to keep up with the, the chat at the same time. Uh, Michael says 18 more subscribers until a thousand. Yes, um, 
I, I, I kind of increase it by some and then for some reason it decreases it again and then kind of increases it and then decreases it. Uh, so uh, it's um, it's a bit kind of, oh, you know, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? No, 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 no. Um, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, right. Uh, hope you go live on Friday. Well, I'm hoping to go live on Friday. And I'm thinking that maybe now that I've done uh, the watercolour uh, live uh, today, uh, maybe I might um, do uh, pastels uh, and do the pan pastels. So that might be um, my next uh, live video. I might look at pastels uh, and uh, see um, how we go with that. Uh, Michael says, my math is always bad. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I have days where I still use my fingers. <laughs> Oh, uh, maths is not my forte. Um, I can count, and uh, I I do have to to count in my capacity as my in my day job. Um, but uh, I'm I'm not particularly uh, quick uh, or um, good at maths. Right. Uh, thank goodness for fingers. Indeed. 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 I think I think that's it. I think I've I hope I've managed um to get uh all the, the questions in. Um and I hope I've answered them uh sufficiently. I hope that um for anybody who had been watching on the uh replay, I very much doubt you've got to this point. Um but if you have, leave me a message. Um tell me. Uh, that you've watched to the end let me know um, that would be absolutely awesome uh, I know I babbled a little bit at the beginning of uh, this live session but I think for people who don't necessarily um, use watercolors there's always a beginner comes along who really doesn't know anything uh, and um, I, I think it's it's useful information and I think it's it's helpful to to, to hear it from a um, you know, I'm not a, a, an expert uh, watercolorist by any means, uh, and so I think it's it's helpful to to get it from what might be termed as a, a layman's uh, um, perspective. So yeah, um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. So take care, everybody. And Melvin says. Bye bye too. Bye bye. <laughs> bye guys. See you all again soon. Hopefully on Friday. Bye. <laughs>